Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of That's Not an Error. I don't know how many more of these I can make because <laughs> it's getting tough. Uh, not getting tough to find stuff, just getting tough to to deal with people. Um, people don't like hearing that their stuff isn't worth a million dollars. They'd rather get the million dollars from somebody else. Um, what is it that I'm doing here? Well, this entire series is devoted to stuff that I find on eBay that is just garbage. People basically trying to scam other people. Now, it's one thing if you don't know. If you don't know what something is and you put it out there to try to sell, I understand that. But when somebody who does know what it is tells you what it is and you now are aware of what it is and you still try to get $1,000 for the item, well, now that makes you a pure scammer because you know it's not worth anything, yet you're still trying to get a ton of money for it. I don't know how else to describe a scam. A scam is when you try to get money from people undeservedly. It doesn't matter if somebody is stupid, okay? <laughs> that That's another one I get so often. If someone's dumb enough to pay it, that's their problem. Well, you're missing the point. The point is you're putting something up there for sale on eBay. People see it for sale on eBay and assume that eBay does checks to make sure that everything is legit. eBay doesn't care. eBay doesn't, does not care at all what you are selling. And eBay, for those of you who are curious, also doesn't care about the complaints. Because people have tried to light me up and I have lit people up to eBay saying this stuff is fake and nothing's ever done about it. Um, I get people constantly telling me that they're going to they're gonna uh, report me to eBay. And I'm sure they have. And nothing happens. So eBay doesn't care. But back to what I was saying. People see the item on eBay and they see a ridiculous price. And they think, well, it's got to be worth at least, you know, if it's not worth $1,400, it's got to be worth at least at least 1000 right? And just seeing it online gives it credibility. The other thing with eBay is, even if we aren't talking about a $1,400 item, say we're talking about a $10 item, I personally, if I don't know the price of something, if I'm looking at obsolete currencies and I don't know the value and I don't have my book handy, if, if it's $20 or less, I'm probably going to buy it at the show because I think it's neat. That's my limit. I'm willing to throw away $20. You know, just, you know, on a whim to see if I'm right and or if I'm wrong. So that's the thing. If you are willing to t throw $20 and take a chance at a particular item, that's what these guys are depending on. They put out $101 bills that are worth a dollar a piece for $20, and they're hoping 100 people in this country of, th what, 350 million? If they can get 100 people to each throw a $20 bill at them... Well, they just made two grand. That's a pretty good month. So that's why it matters. Okay? Now, now those 100 people that each threw the $20, someone else is going to go into eBay sold listings and go, oh, look, these must be worth money because 100 people bought them for $20 a piece. No, all you did was prove that there's 100 idiots in this country who don't know what they're talking about. And I promise you there's a lot more than 100 idiots in this country. Look at the last election. Whichever side you're on, because more than 100 people voted for either side. Now, let's roll back to this particular item. First clue. He wants $1,400 for something. Whenever I see a price that big, I'm always asking questions. Second clue. He has one feedback. A lot of you guys hate it when I go after people with one feedback. Um, if he tags one of you guys for $1,400, you'll be glad that I uh, went after him. Uh, he also has a uh, buy it now price. You can buy it now for $2,100. Uh, an ounce of gold isn't $2,100. He wants more than an ounce of gold for this $10 note. And finally, before you even get to the description, <laughs> he's got the picture upside down. Uh, now, I know I'm, I'm not the most competent person when it comes to doing electronic things, but even when you upload the picture, it still allows you to rotate it, and he can't figure that out. All right, so now let's figure out what this actually is. According to his description, it's a 1976A $10 ink error. Okay, that's his description. So I know it's headache-inducing to look at this bill upside down. 
so we will try. Now, one thing you'll notice is that uh, it is a 2017 note, not a 1976 note. There was no 1976 A $10 notes. Uh, so we already know he has no idea what he's talking about. He's actually talking about this right here, and this, and there's a little bit here. And actually, if we go to the back part, there's the back of the note. He's talking about all of this. Now, I know the color on this is horrible. It's his picture, okay? <laughs> his picture is horrible. But you can see all this on the back of the note. It's red ink. That's what it says. Uh, error. Red ink on bill error. Um, when there's an inking error, what color ink is the most likely to be on the note? I'll give you two guesses. <laughs> Green and black. Why? Because there is no red ink. We don't use red ink. Okay. This may very well be red ink. But it's not a printing error. This is a marker that exploded. That's all this is. This is nothing. You want proof? Here's a dollar. What do you know? Somebody spilt juice all over this dollar. Red ink. Front and back. How about that? Amazing. Okay, here's another little tip as far as ink smears go. Ink smears are going to be one-sided um, because they print the back of the note and then all the pages get stacked up and may, may not get printed again for days or weeks or months. Then they come back and print this side of the note. And then those get stacked up and may not get touched again for days or weeks or months. Then they do the third printing, which has got the serial number. Okay, so they, they do many, many prints with a lot of time in between. So you're never going to get ink on both sides of the paper as an error. Because they're only working with one side of the paper at a time. Uh, it's not like a photocopy where you print both sides at once. Okay. So once again, if it was an error, there'd only be an error on one side because it's extremely rare for there to be any type of inking error. Um, so the thought of inking errors to be on both sides, no, not going to happen. Okay. Secondly, it's red ink. They don't use red ink. Here's an example. This was literally the top note in the group of notes that I'm taking back to the bank. Uh, and it just happens to have the exact same red ink. So apparently this must be worth $2,000 according to this guy. Um, or somebody spilled juice on it. You be the judge. Now, the final thing is the condition. Okay, let's see if... Let's ignore everything else and let's just check out the condition of the bill. Okay, but you can see that there's definitely creases in the bill. If I look at the, you know, the corners got creases. If you look at the edge, you can see there's creases here. You can see that this is not smooth right here. Um, what I'm, what I'm getting at is this note shows obvious, you can see all these little wrinkles here, obvious signs of handling. Okay, obvious signs of handling. Now, as soon as you have obvious signs of handling, how can you be so sure that any of this happened during the printing process? You can't. And because you cannot say that it was happened during the, the uh, printing process, it's not an error. Even if it was an error. Because there's no way to prove it at this point. Okay? This, I'm not, I'm not worried about trying to prove. It's not an error. That's red marker that got spilt on this in circulation. Uh, if it was at least black, or if it was green then maybe there would be a chance. But once again, I wouldn't go as far as to guarantee that because you can't say when the actual damage happened on this particular note. Anyway, $1,400, or you can buy it now for $2,100. Um, you can buy an actual $500 bill for less than $2,100. Um, three, four years, maybe five years ago, I bought my $1,000 bill. I paid $1,800. So if you want to pay $2,000 for a 10 with marker on it, uh, so be it. But uh, what is that? Will bar dash 5182. You will not be getting $1,400 from me or from anybody who watches this video. 
Sorry. Stop trying to scam people. All right, guys, if you learned anything new, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading your comments. Talk to you next week.